What's up, everybody? Welcome to System Crappers Live. I am David Wilson, and we're back again with another Friday stream where we get together as a community and talk about whatever topic I've come up with for the week, and this week is no exception. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say hello to the folks who have gotten here so far. Uh, there was somebody before who showed up, but I didn't remember their name, <laughs> and I don't have the chat backlog now. Uh, also, hello to Judy and to Ashraz. Thanks for being here, folks. Arno, uh, M7R6Y. And uh, I'm sure we'll see some more people join up in a minute. Uh, Captain No Beer, nice to see you. Boy, it's gotten hot. I don't know about where you are, but in Greece, it's getting there. It's definitely July. Kind of sweating now. That's just the summertime, right? That's the way it's supposed to be, especially if you're in the Mediterranean. Hello to uh, Abdurrahman, uh, Henrique, and uh, Menacing Mecca, nice to see you. Thanks all for being here. So uh, today, I would like to experiment with something that I've been meaning to do for a long time, but I really haven't had time to sit down and uh, dig into it, which is to try and craft minimal Docker images with GNU Geeks. Um, you know, building Docker images is interesting, it's very useful, has many different purposes, like if you want to like host software very easily using a container, maybe deploy it to a cloud service somehow. Uh, or even for uh, CI systems, like the Woodpecker CI that's on Codeberg. Um, there's, and there's other uses as well. But the thing about Docker images is that they can be quite large unless you build them on top of something like the Alpine container, which is quite minimal by default because that system is pretty, pretty minimal on its own. Uh, I would like to see how we can maybe approximate that, not necessarily in size, but at least in terms of what little software is put on the container by default. I think that with Geeks, you should be able to get pretty specific about what stuff gets put on the image. So that's sort of what we're going to play with today and see how far we can get. Um, let's see, what what do we have in the way of updates? Uh, the first update is that uh, I mentioned this last week, Emacs Conf 2023 has been announced. Um, that's a great conference and it's very community focused. So if you are interested in talking about anything related to uh, Emacs, then definitely submit a proposal for a talk for Emacs Conf 2023. Um, I think that the longest the talk could be is 20 minutes from what I can tell here. Maybe it could be longer, but uh, generally they're asking for five to 10 minute or 20 minute talks. So not a huge investment of your time and more than likely it will be pre-recorded talks. So you'll have the ability to make sure it's perfect before you send it to them. So you don't have to worry about doing it live. Um, may maybe some people will do it live. I don't know. But uh, at any rate, it's a great conference. Definitely submit a call for, or a proposal to the call for proposals. I might do one. I just haven't thought about what I might want to talk about yet. I mean, I've talked about a lot of Emacs stuff on this channel, so I've kind of burned <laughs> the majority of my ideas. But Ashra says, sounds like we want to try to create Guile Linux. Well, it's technically GNU Linux because it's all the GNU stuff. But sure, yeah. That's what Geek says anyway, right? Um... So yeah, definitely submit a proposal to Emacs Conf 2023. It's a great time. And uh, I, I had I did a talk in 20, what was it, 2021? And it went really well, I think. So uh, definitely worth doing, I think. Uh, the other thing that I forgot to put here beforehand is that uh, the System Crafters Discord is now deactivated. Uh, or more specifically, uh, all channels have been made read only but still searchable. So uh, if you've been in the System Crafters Discord for a while now, or maybe if you just joined recently, um, you may have seen this week that I finally pulled the trigger on deactivating the Discord. Um, if you weren't aware, there, there's a news entry about it right here about community chat moving from Discord to Matrix and IRC. So. 
Definitely check out the uh, the news post on that if you weren't aware that this was happening. But for a long time, I've wanted to get off Discord. Number one, because it's a proprietary platform and they frown upon you using alternative clients. In fact, they will ban you if they want to, if you use an alternative client, so or a bridge even. So I felt like that kind of went against the ethos of this community where you should be able to craft your own system and make your own choices about uh, what software you use or how you interact with services that you use. So um, it just felt wrong. Plus it's a proprietary, proprietary service and it's trying to, you know, game you in various ways. And I just didn't like it too much. Also a lot of toxic activity on Discord. So I decided to, you know, gradually shut it down. And this week was finally the week that we did that. But uh, we, we're all hanging out in uh, Matrix and IRC now. The Matrix and IRC channels are all bridged. So if you go to the community page on the System Crafters website, to the chat with us section. Uh, it will tell you how to join either the main System Crafters room. I should probably add the other rooms to this list. I just haven't, haven't gotten to it yet. And uh, then the link to the Matrix space, which will tell you the rooms we have available in Matrix. And like I said, all those rooms are bridged over to IRC. So the same rooms with the same names are also available in IRC. So you have the choice on how you would like to uh, connect to those. And um, hopefully I'll see more of you join up over there because we've been having a good time in the Matrix Room. Uh, it's, it's been worthwhile, I think, to, to switch over to that, especially because you can use the nice emmet.el package by Alpha Papa, who might be hiding in the audience today, um, which I've found to be uh, very good for using Matrix. So if you want to have a nice Matrix experience and you would prefer to use Emacs, definitely check out emmet.el by Alpha Papa. So uh, that's it for that. Can I put some spaces in here? No, apparently not. Okay, whatever. And uh, Ashraz is giving a salute. Yes, thank you to all of the, um, the moderators who were helping me out on Discord while I was not hanging out there for quite a while. Ashraz, uh, Square Root Minus One, uh, Elkin, uh, Angry Bacon. I think that's it, right? If I'm forgetting someone, I don't think I'm forgetting someone. I think uh, John Sue was also helping at some point, but I think he moved on to other things um, and he wasn't really as involved, which is fine because, you know, it's kind of a big ask of someone to <laughs> to watch over an unruly bunch of crafters who just want to, uh, you know, have fun. Menacing Mega says, one of the trap matrix and, and or IRC for a while, but every time I go to look at how you get started, I get overwhelmed with too many options and put it off longer. Well, um... Matrix is easier, mainly because you don't have to worry about using like an IRC balancer and stuff like that. So if you want to try out Matrix, the easiest way is just to use the Element website. Um, matrix Element, it's app.element.io. If you go there, you can create an account on the main matrix.org server. And then uh, when you do that, then that account that you created, you can actually use the emmet.el package for Emacs. Uh, emacs emmet.el and log in to with your account and then you can just use it all in in emacs which is quite nice and i did do a stream on that um pretty recently system crafters emmet where uh, i showed yeah is emmet.el the best matrix client so um we, we showed how, basically how to use it i don't really know everything but off the pop it was there and and telling me what to do which is great it's not a tutorial, but it is a way to, to learn it. Creeper says, is the Discord server down? We're talking about that right now. Uh, the Discord server is deactivated. So I've, I've made all the channels read only, and we're moved to Matrix and IRC completely now. So uh, we're, we're not hanging out in, in Discord anymore. Hello to Creeper and uh, uh, Andre and Max Rev. Ah, Alex was also a moderator. Thanks, uh, Ashraz. Alex wasn't really... Alex is a good friend of mine from long, long ago. I, I made him moderator, probably the first first moderator, but he wasn't really hanging out there. He's he's sort of tangentially uh, engaged in the community through me. So um, let's see. That's it. That's it for all the updates. All right. So like I was saying before, and I love how huge this is. I need to fix my font faces. Uh, we're what we're gonna work on today is. Um, Ah, yes, uh, Medicine Mecca. Yes, matrix.org can be used as a home server. So you don't need to set one up um, or find some random one. You can definitely use matrix.org. That's where all these channels are hosted. So it's it's good for, you know, just sort of a basic home server. I don't know. It's worked well enough for a lot of people. 
So uh, today we're going to try to craft minimal Docker images using GNU Geeks, uh, mainly for the purpose of, well, there's a, there's a few things that we'll try. So let's just look at this list. Uh, one thing I want to try is making a minimal Geeks container for CI builds. So in many CI systems like GitHub Actions um, and other older CI platforms, you have sort of like pre-baked uh, images for various operating systems or Linux distributions. Um, and those you can't really change. And even things like source hut build, they have their own pre-baked images that everything runs from. But uh, there are some CI continuous integration platforms. These are like basically platforms that will run a job uh, whenever you make a commit to a, a public Git repository or private Git repository, maybe to test your code or make sure that it builds, etc. And some of them actually use Docker containers. And one of them, which I use quite frequently now, is the Woodpecker CI that's on Codeberg. And you can use any Docker container that's on Docker Hub as a container to run your CI jobs in. So what I would like is to be able to run my CI jobs with Geeks um, instead of using an Ubuntu or Debian container, etc. So I would like to try to create a minimal CI container for the purpose of CI builds. Uh, maybe it has Geeks installed in it already. Maybe it has some other dependencies pre-baked. Uh, but we'll see about how uh, that might work. Um, it might be nice to see if we could even uh, build, uh, like build one from a manifest so it's quicker to, to, to set up all the, uh, the dependencies to build a project, etc. cetera. Um, other things would be like packaging software and or services in a Docker container. So maybe you want to deploy a website or some kind of service to a cloud provider. Or maybe you have a VM set up that you can run Docker in and you want to be able to pull in a uh, Docker image for whatever it is that you're trying to deploy. Um, I think it should be possible for you to pretty easily configure such a service using Geeks and build a Docker image out of that that only has the stuff necessary to run that program and then use that to be deployed wherever you want. So we'll take a look at that as well. Uh, simplifying networking with a dash n parameter, just a sort of like a note for myself because I think that we can remove some networking services in Geeks in favor of that. We'll see if that works. Uh, and also we, we should try it out in Woodpecker CI and see if it actually works uh, whenever we get all this set up. Um, Captain Nobeard says, would you touch briefly on the difference between Docker containers and Geeks' own containers? So uh, I believe the difference is that Geeks' containers are using the LXC um, or KVM or something directly and they're sharing the the store of the host system whenever they when you, when you do that. Let's see if uh, deploy. Let's go to contents. Let's just quickly take a look at that Geeks container. Oh, it manipulate processes running within an isolated environment, commonly known as a container, created by Geek Shell. So that's a different thing, I think. There's Docker container stuff as well. Yeah, return a script to run the operating system declared in file within a container. Containers are a set of lightweight isolation mechanisms provided by the Linux kernel. Substantially less resource demanding than full virtual machines since the kernel shared objects and other resources can be shared with the host system. Um, tell me about the store, because I think it is. Let's, let's check this, whoa, let's check this out. So uh, geek system help. I think it does say it. Yeah, build a container that shares the host store. So if you don't know uh, what a store is in terms of geeks, the store is basically the folder that has all of the uh, programs, files, configurations, everything that you've sort of built together as a geeks configuration. And it has them all in a very specific uh, naming scheme so that all the files are unique. So if you look at the slash GNU slash store folder, there's a huge folder of files there that uh, basically have pretty much everything that you've installed in the current system. So what this means is that when you deploy a container um, using Geek System, that it's actually going to run that in a containerized environment, but it's going to share that same store uh, locally so that everything's already there and the, the size of the container itself is much smaller. But if you want to build a standalone Docker image that can be deployed anywhere, then you have to sort of copy all the store elements that you need into that container to be able to execute it. 
yields this live stream as a fourth entry. That's cool. Yeah, Geeks is... Uh, nobody really is talking about Geeks except for me, so I think. Um... Hello says, uh, just use Element, great matrix client, fast enough, even though it's an Electron app. Yeah, L Element is fine. And that's what I use on the phone, on Android. I use L the Element uh, app. Uh, Judy says, uh, Geeks containers use the same underlying tech as LXC, though not LXC directly. Docker used to run in LXC as well, but I think they've moved onto their own system. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. Um, did I put that link in here? Yeah, so I've created a repo to store whatever con configurations we work on here because I kind of want to have this be a place where you can find samples of this and maybe other people can contribute their own if they want to. Uh, it's at uh, codeberg.org slash davidwill slash geeks minimal docker. And whatever we do today, I'll, I'll check it in there just so that you can have that as a reference in case you want to do something similar. So uh, first of all, uh, let's just try to get started with making a minimal geeks container. And as I said at the very top of the stream, we're not going to try to necessarily make it be the smallest file size possible, but we are going to try to make it as minimal as possible in terms of programs and services that are running in the container. Just whatever is like bare minimum necessary for the, to, for the system to run. And we will see if uh, it takes forever to build these images. I don't know how long it takes. It's been a while since I actually tried to do this. So we'll, we'll just have a nice little chat while, while these things are running if necessary. Okay, so I want to get a Docker container image. I wonder if there's something already. I mean, maybe this is going to defeat the purpose of what I'm doing, but let's check out the Geeks repo. What have I got in here? Uh, I don't know why all that's changed. Let me pull what's latest. There are generally some uh, example configs here that we might be able to start from and then see what we can do. Always takes forever to pull this repo because there's so many commits. It's done? Okay, good. Let's see. Packages, services, docker image.template. All right, cool. Ah, barely has any services at all. That's fine. We'll start from here. So let's just uh, drop over to this folder. Uh, Minimal.scm. So what can we put in here? Just geeks, probably, I would say. All right, so host name, minimal, geeks, Europe, Athens, I don't know. And um, let's see, because the system will run in a Docker container, we may omit many things that would normally be required in operating system configuration, bootloader, file system, services such as MinGetty. Wow, you can even get rid of MinGetty, that's nice. Yeah, but definitely a lot of this other stuff is not necessary. Uh, Docker provides similar services already. Okay, so we get rid of the bootloader, which is nice. Uh, no bootloader needed. And then, um, okay, so no file systems needed. And then we just have the geek service type. So this is like the most basic starting point, it seems. All right, so now uh, user. Okay, globally install packages. I wonder what's in base packages. Because that list might be larger than necessary. Let's go back into the Geeks repo. So um, it's probably going to be in uh, packages.scm, base packages. Okay, come on. All right, come on now. D did I not press it? Whoa. I don't know how this thing got stuck now. That's really funny. 
I don't even know how that's possible. Okay, I may have to kill it. I don't think so. But it's possible that the buffer env thing is running and that's doing something, but I don't see anything happening. Meta X is undefined. All right. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to kill Emacs and then go back into it. If you see me sweating profusely, it's because it's grease. All right. So alacrity. We're we really going to have to kill. Wow. I can't even load alacrity. This is going to be real fun. Cool. Let's just start another Emacs session. Okay. Anyway. So let's go to projects, uh, code geeks. Okay. That time it worked. So this time let's look for define, uh, base packages. There it is. Did I not just accept that? All right. So base packages. I don't know why Python is there. Packages that must be substitutable on all the platforms that Geek support. So we might try to see which of these we can get rid of. Open SSH might be necessary. I wonder, um, so we had seen uh, Geeks, minimal Docker, minimal .scm. All right, so we had seen that it pulls in the Geek service type. Let's take a look at what Geek service type is. Back in the Geeks repo, uh, define Geek service type. And how I'm finding all this stuff is I'm just using uh, consult rip grep and just searching for the defines for these things. I'm getting a lot of stuff out of the, um, the, the manual localizations right now, but I should be able to find the actual definition. Is it right there? Okay. Does it have any dependencies? All right, so shepherd root service type account service, activation service, profile service. Both Emacs and Vim are in the base packages. Yeah, that's pretty weird, right? Let's see what we can get rid of from that list too, because it feels like some of that shouldn't be, shouldn't, shouldn't be necessary. But you know, before we do that, maybe we should just build the base image and then see, just so we can tell for sure what's needed or not. Hello, Sir Robert Downey Sr. Okay, so uh, now let's go down to projects, code, geeks, minimal docker. All right, now we got minimal.scm. And I think what I want is uh, geeks system docker image. Interesting. Uh, system help. So there's the Docker image command, build a Docker image. Geeks system Docker image. I'm guessing I just put in minimal. SEM and let's see how long this takes if I can type. All right. Okay. So, oh, okay. Docker image is deprecated. Use image instead. We should, you know, update the docs. I think this is the develop docs. All right. That's probably why that didn't show up. Image. All right. So image type. I'm guessing image type can be set to Docker. List image types. So let's say list image types. And there's Docker. Okay. So geeks system image. Image type Docker. That should be it, right? Whoop, I got to give it the file. Missing argument. Okay, I got to give the equal, right? There we go. Modify services, service NCSD and NSCD not found in services list. Interesting. So does it want that? Well, let's go check it out. Um, NSCD service type. There we are. This is in base. 
GNU services base in SCD service type. Probably all I need to do. So we have to add some stuff, it seems. It's not so cut and dried like this thing made it out to be. Service in SCD service type. I'm guessing this is like a base networking service. Uh, so, really? Syslog D? Okay. I wonder... Let's try it, um... With another parameter real quick. So there's like a networking parameter. Network. For container, allow containers to access the network. Let's see if that works with this and uh, removes the need for this extra networking stuff. Okay, st still the same. All right, fine, whatever. So you really want this log D, huh? Is it syslog service type? Okay, syslog service type. What about um, base services? I'm guessing it's gonna want me to pull in a couple of these things. All right, so let's just drop that in and let's run it one more time. Okay, maybe it's happy now. Yeah, Pine, uh, Pinebug Pro sounds pretty cool actually. The kernel package itself is 103 megabytes. And just out of the sake of curiosity, uh, Docker Alpine image. Kind of curious like how big this is. Oh, five megabytes. So we're probably not gonna get that small because we're gonna have Geeks and Guile, which probably will bloat some things. However, you know, we could get rid of that stuff actually. A little too Raleigh. Let's see how this goes. That is downloading extremely slowly. See a lot of hearts happening in the chat. Don't know why. All right. So yeah, we're we're definitely not going to get as small as Alpine, but we can we can try. We can see what happens. So long as the uh, Libre image hurries up and downloads. But so far the actual configuration is pretty minimal and you can just build on top of that to do whatever it is that you need to do for uh, a Docker image. So uh, one other thing while we're waiting on this to do, I wanna look into, uh, let's see, GNU Geeks Nginx, just to see how, we can set up an Nginx server. All right, so server blocks, configuration, server name, root. Um, what about files? I wanna be able to host like a basic index.html file. Upstream blocks. I've never actually, okay. Index files look up when clients ask for a directory, fine. I've never configured um, Nginx before with Geeks. Got some varnish, varnish cache stuff. There's gotta be a way to do that though. And I do not wanna run Apache too much. So try files, okay.
The root of the website Nginx will serve. I mean, that, that seems right, but I had, would have to put the files somewhere. Oh, hmm. Maybe I can actually pass something to that. We'll give that a shot. I could probably give it a uh, directory. And then um, Geeks G Expression. That's generally the place where I look for directory. not unions there is a way to include a whole path I think file like objects to any directories I swear there was one for directories wait what Okay, now, now we're at this stage where it's building the image. We'll see how long that takes. Curious to see how big it is, because the kernel might take up a lot of space. I guess the kernel also might need to be configured to drop a lot of stuff that is not needed. So that could be another component to making a smaller image. Uh, a file or directory computed by G expression. Okay. Recursive. Okay. So local file probably is a directory path and you can say it's recursive. Fellow worker, John, hello, says that, uh, I found out today that the author of Ruby mats was inspired by Emacs when he wrote Ruby in the first place, he even wrote Ruby mode. Uh, that's cool. Captain Nobeard says, is the idea that the built Docker image could be uploaded to Docker Hub and then pulled by the CI script? Yes, that's right. That, that's sort of the goal, is to upload it to Docker Hub and then it can be used um, for builds. And generally, whenever you do that, your CI system is going to cache the latest version of the image, so it should be fast after the first installation. So if you want to have like a fully custom image for running your own tests, you could do that. CI CD my Emacs config? No. CI CD for actual like code projects. I do use CI CI CD for building websites using Emacs. If you want to see an example of that, uh, go to Codeberg System Crafters, System Crafters site, and take a look at the woodpecker.yaml file, and I'm using a Docker image called uh, Silex slash Emacs, and it basically just runs an Emacs script to generate the entire systemcrafters.net site and then publish it. Yeah, um, I also have used uh, Steve Purcell's uh, Emacs image on GitHub Actions, and it worked just fine. Okay, so now this actually got built. Let's see how big it is. I'm, I'm not super optimistic. 368 megabytes, so that's uh, pretty hefty still. Uh, I wonder what's in it though. Um, we could probably look at some of the graphs for services, etc., to see what else is in it. But we did see some pretty heavy stuff being added in the base packages. So maybe we can get rid of some of the things in base packages first. Um, where was that at? Base? Nah. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, there's a few of them here. Default set of packages globally visible. It should include anything required for basic administrator tasks. Uh, base packages artwork is not in required for basic administrator tasks. Base packages Linux. A lot of this should not be needed. Let's go back. Um, yeah, it's base packages. That's way too much stuff. I don't think any of these things are needed. Base packages. 
networking. I mean, some of these might be nice to have for debugging purposes, but for a an image that doesn't need to have anything special, let's just take this out. Make it an empty list for now and see if that helps. I don't know how long it's going to take to rebuild this, though. All right. Let's, uh, let's, whoa. Okay. Let's do that again. Okay, good. At least it's going straight to building the Docker image. Uh, Ashra says, uh, oh, sorry, Captain Obeer says, I wonder if there's other compressions options besides GZ. Maybe, yeah. Ashra says, I might have had uh, led my DevOps guys to include Emacs in a Debian base image because I generate some documentation within CI CD from org files. Well, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. All right. So once again, it's going to take a moment for that to happen. Okay, so back to this. So we were looking for how to set up a basic Nginx site just while we're waiting for everything else to show up. I believe that um, an Nginx server configuration with a listen set up, uh, server name potentially, and then a root should be enough. The root of the website, the Nginx will serve. I believe that would do it. It says default. I don't know if it's supposed to be a string. In fact, we could go find that actually. Um, that is what type. This is Nginx server configuration. Def oh, wait, let's go here. Uh, define Nginx server configuration. Is that right? Uh, not there. It's a lot of extra stuff. Okay, here's our record type. Now, uh, root is doesn't say, does it? Because it's not defined as a configuration. Uh, configuration root. That's weird. Emit nginx server config. Okay. So root. Uh, oh. So it does not expect a G, a G expression there. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm multitasking, Ashraz. I'm, I'm looking into how to use the Nginx service to like host a basic HTML site uh, while we're waiting on the Docker image to get built for the minimal image. And I don't yet see how to uh, get it to build what I'm looking for. Let's check this out real quick. Uh, D-U-H. Okay, that's 324 megabytes. And before it was what 368. Okay, that's not much of a saving on that, unfortunately. But that's okay, because what we're really concerned with is how how little it has installed program wise. Let me check one thing. Let's actually in, import it. I believe in the geek system stuff, it tells us how to import a Docker image. Yeah, Piotr, I, I agree. It does look like it's just a string. I was expecting it to be a G expression so you could just pull in like a local path, but it doesn't seem to be the case, which is unfortunate. Okay. There must be a way to do that though. I mean, this is geeks after all. All right, so Docker create. Um, let me put that in the readme for geeks, minimal Docker, readme, uh, building and trying images. So we used, it was a geeks system image dash dash image uh, type equals docker minimal.scm. In fact, um, I think we do need to follow this approach. So image path.
No. All right. And then Docker start with a container ID. Oh, this image ID, uh, we are creating an instance of the container, yes. And then Docker start. Not only starts it though, I kind of want to just run it. Uh, let's see, yeah, this is better. This one right here, because I don't know if it's going to have bash on it even, but we can try it. Okay. So this is sort of the script. In fact, maybe I should make that a script. So uh, run config.sh man that does the wrong thing sometimes okay so um let's uh what is it hash uh, sorry dollar zero bash get first argument Yeah, let's try that. And um, I will shmod x on run config, run config, uh, minimal.scm. Let's see what that does. Ashra says, for some reason I cannot write a proper Docker line in YouTube. Not surprised. Uh, wait a minute. Pository name must be lowercase. What does that mean? Unless I did something wrong here. Perhaps this is wrong. Okay, so it has a, a Docker image. Geek's latest, okay. Hey, Elijah. Is it new? So there's no such container, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, unless uh, container ID is, is empty. No container ID. Uh, invalid reference format repository name must be lowercase. It is lowercase, isn't it? Do I need to remove the old one? Docker... Come on, docker run it detach. Let's see, docker ps, what we got here? Nothing. So I have a list of what images I have, uh, docker images. Let's see. Okay, so there's a geeks 53 years ago, which sounds wrong. <laughs> I might need to delete that though, right? Docker PSA. Wow. Uh, I don't see a geeks one in there. Yeah, you, you can't paste links into YouTube chat if you're not an admin because it just eats them. Okay. So, um, is there a way to like force 
Which one of these is the one causing the problem, I wonder? Maybe we just, we'll just go through it uh, line by line. I know this is a waste of time. Sorry about that. Oh, uh, minimal the SEM. All right, so that's good. Image ID. Oh, because it's got loaded image in there. I think that's the problem. I feel like I've run into that before. Yeah, I think, um, is there a way to force that? Docker load help. Nope. Docker load um, output. Is it dash Q? Or is that going to just write nothing? My prompt is not working correctly, so this gives me some trouble. No. Yeah, I gotta rip that front part off. Do I need to use like sed or something on that? Bash remove uh, string prefix. Awk print three. Yeah, there's said cut cut F three D. Let's see. Um, echo. Image ID. I don't think I did, it, did that right. Come on now. So cut is there. Pipe, thank you. Okay, there we go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So let's just grab that and drop it in here. I hope that works. In fact, uh, let's let's take a look at that real quick. Just pop into the shell. This will all be worth it in a little while. There we go. Okay, so now this uh, this step should work better. And then echo container, no, container ID. Cool, there we go. Now I should be able to run this docker exec command. Uh, not running. I suppose I need to docker run that. Stop. There we go. No such image. Actually, I probably should just do it in the shell, right? I can just do it by image, right? Image ID. You can start existing containers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. See, I'm not a Docker expert. Let's see if this works. 
Uh, we're generating key pairs here. <clears throat> but it does seem that the system is uh, working. This initial launch is not ideal. I think before you upload this image, you would probably need to run it once to make sure that this stuff is there, right? Come on. It's taking way too long. Disable key pairs. Would I need that if I need to SSH into the image? I don't even know how it's showing up there. Unless it's, this, this is probably for the, um, you know, that might be for the, uh, the Geeks Build Daemon. I think that's why that's happening. We may have to take the uh, Geeks service out, which means you can't use Geeks. So there's sort of two paths you might have to take. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely for the, for the Build Daemon. That's taking way too long. What's happening? Okay, so it's not letting me kill it at all. <laughs> that's that's too slow though. Yes. Well, it can't get any entropy because it doesn't have like, you know, mouse and keyboard attached to it necessarily. Control P, Control Q, does that work? Oh, cool. So, um, PS aux uh, Docker, sorry, rep. No, let's not do that. Okay. Yeah, it's probably in Docker PS. Is it running? Well, it's, it's active. Ah, different container ID, whatever. Docker attach. Uh, Docker attach Lucid Shockley, is that right? Still doing nothing. Control P, Control Q. Okay. Um, fine. So maybe I should just kill that one. There's probably a kill command, I would guess. Yeah, kill one or more running containers. Let's just do that. Okay, not running. So what I would like to try uh, this time Go back to minimal, take out the geek service type. Let's just try it without geeks inside of it. I wonder if we need the rest in that case. Um, in fact, maybe I should just make this an empty list instead of uh, trying to do that. Oh, thanks. I actually have a lispy here. Okay, so. I literally have nothing. I don't know if this is going to work at all. There's no services. There's no packages. No nothing. We're going to try to build this again. This time I'm going to try to use the script because the script should work. Based on all the changes that we made. So uh, run config uh, minimal that SCM. Docker invalid reference format. Um, yeah, okay, here we go. Oh, okay. It wants the NSCD regardless of the geek service. That's fine. So we'll just uh, uncomment those two, just bring them back up. And then this one I'll comment out because I don't want that geek service in there. I'm not doing error handling very well inside of the uh, script. Uh, Elijah says, are you sure you want to go the route of system containers instead of the Geeks pack containers? Well, um, I know there is like a Geeks pack container. That's for running a program, isn't it? 
Let's uh, go grab the docs on Geek's Pack. You can produce a pack in the Docker image format using the following command. So for a given program, you can do that, which is, if all you want to do is run a specific program, that could be a pretty good um, thing. I don't know what kind of services it tries to start up though. We should try that though, actually, and see. Because if we can um, tell it Geeks Pack for, let's say like the hello program that which does nothing except for just write out hello and it has a smaller image size, that would be pretty interesting. Yeah, Elijah, we're, we're trying to do a couple different things. You know, one that can like host a geek service, like a, a Nginx service. Uh, one that can be for a general CI container. Okay, oh wow, okay. So it doesn't run any services, just wraps up a geek's profile in a Docker format. That's cool, it, that might be quite smaller then, in that case. We should try that because if you can just put like all the necessary build tools in it, then that might be very small by comparison. Okay, so we've got the image started. I don't see it talking about uh, entropy yet. but maybe because there's no bash. I didn't put bash in. So, um, let's see. I'll have to use uh, map uh, specification, specification to package. Bash. Uh, core utils, I would say, just to have the basic commands necessary. Control PQ, is that, was that what it was? Control PQ, all right, cool. Uh, Docker PS, Docker kill, <laughs> exciting uh, Dijkstra, wow, okay. Okay. So maybe we can start with with this, Let's see if we get any better luck. While we're waiting, um, let's see, manifest, well, profile manifest.scm. How was I doing that in my own manifest files? Uh, let's see, config, geeks, manifests, specifications, specifications to manifest. Okay, let's go to profile manifest. Not necessarily, well, we could put GCC toolchain. Actually, let's just put hello for now. We'll try that too. Hey, Dave. Uh, it makes a mini store containing just what's depended on by the profile and wraps it up in the Docker image format with some extra sim links. Cool. Well, that could definitely be a lot sim simpler for things like doing uh, builds. Like if you wanted CMake and GCC, that could be a lot easier. So let's see. Uh, if I go back to the readme... Um, building a, an image from a geeks manifest. So let's, uh, run this through. I was assuming that by running it was actually going to drop me into a shell, but it's not doing that. 
Judy says, it means you probably don't have access to Geeks though. Yeah, I, I might need to include Geeks and by including Geeks, it might not, might not be able to build anything if, if uh, the service is not running. So if you want to use Geeks to build a an image that doesn't use Geeks inside of it, then Geeks Pack might be the better approach. Let's see, Geeks Pack F Docker. Slash bin equals bin. Okay. That's probably needed. What is the dash S? Sim like, okay, hold on a second. Right, okay. Is it possible to substitute Docker with uh, Podman? Hello, Theo Peckley. Um, maybe. I don't know if it uses the same image format. This must be hanging because I'm doing something wrong with the Docker run invocation. I'm guessing that's the case. Um, so let's uh, Docker PS, Docker kill, unruffled Kirch. Why do I need login to get a login shell? I don't know if it's needed. That's what um, something told me. So. And Elijah says, yeah, you can use the images with Podman. I haven't tried Podman on Geeks yet. What is Scopio? Thanks, Ashros. All right, so um, Docker run options image command. Well, that should be right. And then TI, I is interactive, keep it open. And T is uh, to use a TTY, okay. Command line utility that performs various operations on container images and image repositories. Nice. <laughs> Elijah says, in some ways, Podman on Geeks is, is a lot nicer than Docker and in other ways, really annoying. You'll have to elaborate on that because I haven't tried it. Okay, so um, seems like the Docker run invocation is right. I don't know why it's just hanging unless I didn't install some stuff that it needs in the image. Let's uh, let's flip over to using the uh, Geeks Pack just out of sake of curiosity. Uh, go back to the readme.org and ah well, can I give it a manifest file? So Geeks Pack help. Can I do like dash m? Yeah, dash m. I'm guessing dash M uh, profile manifest to SEM. Let's see what that does. Building a nice little profile. Uh, Dave says it makes it possible to go directly from geeks pack to uploading to a registry. GitLab in my case, no daemon to manage. That's that's great. All right, cool. Let's check this out. All right, that's 25 megabytes. That's significantly smaller. Um, let's see if we can run that. I think we would need to have a similar script. I'll need to take this path here. This is very messy, I know. Crap. Let's just start over. Uh, image path equals. My prompt is totally busted. 
image path equals. Okay, let's do that. Now echo image path. All right, so we got the path file. All right, so we got the image ID. Uh, we don't need to use the uh, create, do we? Now that we have image ID, we can just leave the container thing alone, I believe. So if I do this, um, I should just say hello. Fail to create shim task. Unable to start container. Uh, and then there's, it says no um, hello path. Should be there though. Oh, wait a minute. Did I forget? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let's do this. I think it needs to be like this. Ah, all right, cool. That worked. So, um, yeah, it needs extra steps aside from that. Yeah, let's see if we can do that without the explicit path. I can just run hello directly. Yeah, it works. Cool. So if you wanted to, you could make a very, very simple image that's super small. That was uh, 25 meg. Let's try it with something a little bit more. Um, let's try it with, let's say CMake and GCC Toolchain. That's not very small, but this should be a good example that if you if you wanted to build a project without Geeks, if you wanted to make an image that had only what was needed to build a particular project with Geeks, but not actually use Geeks in the image, then you could do it this way. Uh, let's give it one more try here. That's, uh, man. My, my history is totally screwed. There we go. We'll build a new profile. And then, um, You'd probably need dependencies and stuff too, so it wouldn't be just so simple. But if you had a project where you had a manifest.scm file, then you could actually build a container like that, for sure. I'll take just a second. While that's going on, uh, let's see. Anything else it tells me here? SquashFS. Because uh, there's a different container execution environment it's called Singularity. I haven't used that one before. Anyone use Singularity? Uh, Judy says, probably also interesting for building portable dev environments to hook into from the same manifest that can be used on Geeks directly. Yes, definitely. I mean, before I started trying to make uh, local Geeks.scm files for my projects, I was using manifest.scm everywhere. So... It's nice that you could use the same manifest.scm to build an image that can be used to build your project without having to install all those dependencies. Okay, so we got the image built now. Let's go back here. We're loading up the image ID or the image in, into it. And now if I go and run GCC-H, Okay, that's fine. Boom. All right, so we're running GCC right out of the container. Let's see how big the container is, actually. Uh, du-h uh, image path. 164 megs, which makes sense because you got the whole tools chain for GCC and for CMake in there. So it's much bigger for that. Elijah says, uh, yeah, we run Singularity on our cluster. It's a container platform specifically for containers that need to be run rootlessly. That's cool. Whoops. All right, so uh, that is a nice example. You know, just packing a Docker image from a Geeks Manifest. Thanks to Elijah for the pointer on that one. Uh, let's go back then to making a more complete system image. So, all right, so 
let, let's try to delineate, delineate the uh, scenarios. Uh, use this if... So that is uh, pretty useful. If you already have a manifest.scm file, you can use that in a Docker container. And the result is quite small. So then building a minimal geek system image, what we really want is to make it so that you can use geeks to build a project. So. It would also be nice if it could be preceded with the packages for building the uh, project. Uh, Elijah says, if you're looking for ways to take Geeks built stuff and run it without Geeks, Geeks Pack ha has other useful formats to consider too. Yeah, Geeks Pack is nice for um, de deploying applications built with Geeks. But probably... I suppose you don't need to use Geek services if you wanted to like host a service. If you built a program that needs to be running as a service in a Docker container, you don't necessarily need to use Geeks for, for hosting that. So you could probably uh, just run it directly, especially if you have a container orchestration environment like Kubernetes or something to stand all these things up and wire them together. You can do it a little bit more directly, but uh, maybe if you want to have, you know, like something hosted, Dave says, we deployed a list game jam entry with Geeks Pack. It was giant, but it worked. Yeah, you got to include all the stuff necessary to uh, to run those binaries. So, yeah, it's not great. All right. So, back to the minimal image. I was trying to get in, into where I could run bash, but for some reason, when the system starts up, it doesn't finally get into the uh, TTY. Let's go back and look at the temple. You could build a deb in RPM too. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right. Back in the Geeks repository. this mentioned anywhere nope uh, what's the bare bones example okay it's got like a DHCP client which is not needed All right, so yeah, the Docker image probably is better. I don't know, it doesn't seem to be working, does it? Go back to run config man of, or no, minimal.scm. Just kind of hangs. Just sits here like this, doesn't tell me anything. S trace. Can I do that to a Docker image? Okay, so you have to uh, add some capabilities to it whenever you run it. Do you need this caddy thing? Oh, set comp uh, uh, unconfined. 
I see. Okay. Definitely seems to be hanging. Okay. So it seems like this one, right? Okay, so. Let's grab the the last line. Docker run image. Uh, yeah, okay, so. I need to add this uh, sec, sec, comp, sec comp unconfined, right? Does that work? And then... I probably need to put that before everything else, though. Okay, it is before everything else. And I don't, I don't have the geeks. All right, let's tr let's run bash. Um, what was that? Run current system profile bin bash login. I don't know if I need the login part, but I'll put it there anyway. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Fail to create shim task. Did I, I forget to run the rest of the stuff? Wrong positioning of the arc, is that what it was? Okay. Got it. Got a lot of Docker experience in the audience today, which is great, because I'm not the uh, the world's expert. All right, it's still a little bit unhappy about that. Uh, let's see. Oh, CMake GCC toolchain latest. That's wrong. That's right. Okay, now I understand why. I need to. Uh, rerun all the stuff. Can I just add that? Let's add this to the uh, script. I think I made a dumb mistake. Okay, so now. So it's just chilling, but we'll see if we can run S trace on it. Probably have to run that as pseudo, right? PID. Uh, let's see, PS aux grab docker. Is that the one? Can't be this one, right? Has to be the 1238. We can try it though. Um, S tray 7060. Dash P. 1238, okay. Sure. Well, it definitely isn't doing anything. You know, um, I'll bet it's because there is not a TTY. I'll bet money. This is what I was thinking would have to happen. So let's uh, let's take a look at. 
Yeah, I need to put a like Mengeti or something. So base system, wait, base services. All right, so virtual terminal service type, I might need that. Sure. And I'll definitely need a console font service. I probably don't need it, but since I don't know for sure. I don't know how much of this is needed, actually. I'm just going to put one TTY. We don't need six. And then uh, we already have syslog. Uh, A Getty versus Min Getty. Oh, we have both. Gotcha. All right. So we only need one TTY. Is this right? We'll see. So, all right. So syslog D. Um, hmm. I also want to do auto login. That's probably needed. Um, is that in part of the user configuration or is it part of the min getty? Uh, let's see, define min getty configuration. Okay. Auto login. Okay. Let's see if that works. Now, we'll do the uh, run config again and see what it does. All right, cool. Extraneous field initializers. I must have screwed that up. Oh, there's no question mark. Mm -hmm. Not consistent with other things I've read. All right, let's see what this does. Got to have a TTY before the TTY works. I suppose the question is, is this part needed if you don't intend to interactively run? And I'm guessing the answer is no. This may need to be expanded to an uh, interactive.scm or something, because if you want an interactive container, you need to have this extra stuff installed. Otherwise, I would imagine all the services should work. This is why we need the Nginx service working. Um, for a CI image, we probably will need the TTY to work because it needs to uh, be able to send commands to it. I'm guessing. We'll take a look at it whenever it finally builds this image. The image will get bigger for sure, but that's fine. I mean, what can we do? For Alpine, the fact that it's uh, five megabytes, or at least that's what they say it is. I don't know if it's still the case. I mean, what would make it five megabytes? It only has BusyBox for basic commands. It probably has Bash or some other shell like that. And then it has uh, APK, the package manager, and maybe OpenSSH or whatever SSH package they use. And then you just install whatever stuff you want on top of that. So it doesn't really need much. Okay, BusyBox shell, you're probably right. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's why it's so small on that end. Here we're using more or less the full-sized uh, GNU utilities. Okay, is this going to work now? Does not look like it. Just going to wait for a second to see what it does.
Okay. Interesting. So I wonder if I were to create one with like basic services. Yeah, they have the most minimal Linux kernel possible, right? That that would make a big difference, I think. There's a lot of unneeded um, stuff built into the default desktop Linux kernel. All right, so. We've got the services set up. That should have been a part of it. I'm gonna take a look at the size of that file, just out of curiosity, even though it didn't work. Oh, that's the uh, derivation. I don't want that. Will it have the same hash? I think the hash would be, would be different. It's not gonna be the same, is it? Yeah. Not the same. It didn't write it out. Fine. Uh, let's see. Am I missing anything from the... The image parameters. I wonder if I need to run it the way that it is recommending, like actually use this container start or start container and then uh, use Docker exec. The container additional permissions. If you, need, if you need to build software using geeks, you may need to pass the privileged option to Docker create, okay? And thus without services like the NSCD or network manager. See that, th that I don't think is true. Cause it did ask me to, uh, to add those. For instance, I can take that NSCD service type out and then try to build the image myself. Let me just go grab the command line for that. Drop it in here, um, dash dash, what was it? Network. Privilege. I can't uh, spell that right now, apparently. Privileged, edged. Uh, <laughs> privileged, unrecognized option. Yeah, I think there's some uh, stale stuff in the docs that doesn't actually apply anymore. I don't see privilege at all. And I'll bet you it's going to tell me that I need to have the NSCD. Yeah, service NSCD not found in service list. So there's a few things here that need to be patched in the docs, I think. So I'll try to build this anyway. I just want to see what the uh, the image file size looks like after it's done. Type of service that runs a giddy, which implements virtual and serial console login. Uh, virtual, let's see, we'll see the other one I had to pull in. Oh, was it to Docker run? I don't know. It, was, it didn't say that. 
Oh, it's Docker Create. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. I wonder why that's necessary. Taking a sweet time. I do want to get one thing working here. I mean, I, I don't think that we'll have a super min minimal image for running geeks. Hey, Fade. Probably to map the low network ports. Oh, you know what? That's a good point, actually. I'll need that, in fact for uh, hosting an Nginx server on port 80 if I wanted to do that. Okay, let's take a look at the size of this image. Probably gonna be pretty uh, massive now. Two twenty, not that bad. I mean, it is what it is. So, uh, it's not working, but I wonder if I need to run it the way that is described in the manual. Hungry Boo Man. So let's uh, get all the way there. Docker load. Wow. After unpacking it, it's uh, 600 and so. Rename the old one to empty string. Loaded image geeks latest. All right, cool. So Docker create. Come on now. Contain. Uh. Geeks latest. All right, so docker stalker. Mm -hmm. so, I don't know if I need to sudo that. Docker start privileged uh, container ID. Docker, what? Did I do that? Oh, docker create. My mistake. Let's go back here. All right, so we started that container. And then now uh, Docker exec. There it is. Bash, geeks command not found. I bet it's because it's um, running a profile. And I don't have Geeks installed. Okay, so strangely, Docker Run didn't want to work for this, but Docker Exec did. So what's the deal with that? I guess the boot process prevents it from... Uh, a bad entry point maybe so does this mean it create also triggers a run i guess so run with privilege may work okay let's uh let's kick it out then docker ps uh docker kill objective heisenberg all right let's go back to try and docker run it Well, you don't need the set comp part because it didn't really tell us anything to begin with. So, whoops. All right, I'm going to go here. Privileged. And image ID is uh, Geek's latest. So 
Still nothing. So it runs the system, but it never releases control back to Docker for it to launch that program, I think. I was assuming that auto login was gonna cause that to happen, but apparently auto login is not even needed. Because when you um, use Docker exec, I think it's just running as, as the root user inside the, inside the system. Okay. So what did we learn from this? In fact, we may be able to get rid of some of this other stuff in here. Actually, let's get rid of all of the TTY business. I don't know if it's necessary. Now, Docker PS. I know, Ashraz, I could be using the snippet that you gave me. Where was that? Let's see. Because I'm tired of having to do this lookup every time. Uh, do I have Xargs installed? Yeah. All right. So it was Docker PSQ Xargs Docker kill. Sweet. So now let's try to do the whole um, exec dance again. Dr. Create Image ID. All right, that should be enough. Now, run config minimal.scm. Now let's let it do its job building it again. Uh, whoop. Container is not running. Did I miss the start step? Yep. Cool. That should work. Oh, all right. So now we're in. Okay. So we don't need. The uh, virtual terminal stuff. That stuff's not needed. Now. If we look at uh, ls run current system, what was it? Uh, profile bin. Seems we have the typical um, core utils and bash. And that's about it. So we can get rid of core utils if we wanted to, if we didn't need that, which you probably don't in a machine that is, well, you, you would need it in a machine that's gonna be used for CI because you probably want to use copy or move or things like that. So you might need it for that reason. Bash, I wonder if bash is needed. Well, I guess it, it is needed because we're trying to run it, but what else though? Uh, privilege for create. Yeah, privilege might be needed. Let, let's see, does that work? I need to double check that I'm typing that correctly. Let's kill that image. What is happening? Where is the history that I just had? What is happening? That's so weird. Like it lost the history that I had here. Uh, okay, so <laughs> Docker PS was a Q, Xargs uh, Docker kill. All right, that's right. Privilege takes an option. Docker create help L. Thanks, Judy. All right, so privileged, privileged, privileged. I think that's right. We'll run it one more time. Run config minimal the SEM. Okay, it's all good. That was pretty fast actually for boot up. 
So what did I change? I just took out the services that weren't needed. Okay, so I'm guessing that if we're if we're going so far to have a an image like this, we're gonna want to have geeks in it so they can be used. So let's also add geeks as a package. It may not be needed, but to put it in the global profile, you'll probably want that. So uh, we can try to run that one more time. Oh, privilege defaults to false. Huh. In the uh, command line args, it did not seem to uh, denote that. It's taking longer to build now because I added the Geeks service type. But uh, we should be able to see if uh, we can run Geeks inside the container whenever this finishes. All right, we never did figure out the whole Nginx thing, though. We, so we didn't get all the things done today that I wanted to because we got uh, blocked on some stuff. Is there uh, an example of an Nginx config somewhere in the manual, I wonder? There's all these little um, examples of things in the manual that don't show up except for on other pages. So service nginx service type. Well, let's just take a look. Oh, in the cookbook even. CD geeks doc cookbook. Is it in here? Where is it? Geeks cookbook. Setting up nginx with Lua. root is slash etc oh uh, is it location configuration okay let's check out uh, the location configuration body Body of the location block specifies a list of strings making contain configuration directives. Well, let's put a G expression in there. Sure, it's taking a while for the image to build, huh? Okay. I have no name. What happened? Okay, so Geeks does work at least. Geeks, um, let's see, LS, GNU, store. Cool. All right, so it has a store. Uh, Geeks uh, describe. Oh, Geeks describe. All right. So it does have the main channel. Probably I would need to have a channel configuration if I wanted to be a little bit different there. But uh, now we do have a minimal Docker image. We'll see how minimal it is though, because I think that's going to be quite heavy. I think it was back to like what three hundred something megabytes. Uh, Geek system image image dash type equals Docker minimal. And then disk usage dash h 324 megabytes. So if you want a full-fledged uh, Geeks Docker container, then you're going to have to pay for it, apparently. Let's see if I can figure this out in a few minutes. Nginx location configuration.
So that's the body of that block. I see. Okay. That's a configuration file. Web root. So I know that certbot has some stuff that it tries to insert into the uh, Nginx config. Yeah, this is what I was looking for. This blog post by uh, Matthew, who is one of the contributors to Geeks, um, did have an example of generating a website using Haunt and then building a Geeks image to uh, host it. And how is it being deployed? Static website service type. Yeah, I knew that Dave would be interested in this. Ah, yes, it does look quite familiar, doesn't it? It looks like uh, your website. <laughs> so let's see. Static website service type, did, did he write this? Yeah, that's an external repository. What does that do? Oh, it's in the maintenance repo. Um, which module is that coming from? Mm, sysadmin web. What? It can't be right. Oh, Hydra modules, okay. Sysadmin, there it is. Um, was that it? Sysadmin web, there we go. This must be like an extension to the Nginx service type. Uh, Geeks GNU org nginx server. Where's that defined? Okay, use a regular nginx service. How do you get static files to be placed? Because it doesn't seem like there's a G expression um, anywhere obvious where I can just like say, here's a folder with files, just use this as the uh, files to serve for a given. Because this root thing, the root of the website Nginx will serve, it appears that it just looks for a string and not a full G expression that could be pulled. Unless I'm making a mistake there. Service type. Set root. Um, Nginx server block, that's for git tile. Mm -hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> ah, you know what? That's probably what it is. The G expression to construct this uh, location config needs to include 
the, um, the path created by the local file? I, I would think so, but I, I didn't get the impression that you could. Okay, so here we are. Body, list, stringer pin, root. This seems like the thing. So I just need to construct this string myself. Do we have time for this? Uh, all right, let's see. Geeks, minimal docker, um, www.index.html. PHP test, thanks Copilot for that useless string. That's enough, right? Okay, so. Let's uh, copy the minimal config to a uh, web server.scm. I don't know. And in this one, I don't want geek service type because we're not going to be running a geek service out of this. Doc type is missing. Yeah, we're not going to be pedantic on that right now. And uh, I want to have the Nginx I'm gonna throw in the uh, Nginx service configuration. Let's go back to Yeah, it's just a service extension. I love Geeks extension models, pretty awesome. Okay. Server blocks. I think that's what I want right there. It needs to have a listen set up though. So we don't want this proxy pass thing. We want the uh, the root. And that's coming from um, right here. I don't know what that's all about. And instead of that, I'm going to say uh, local file. Hopefully. Okay. We don't need this body anymore. How far are we? Got to get the... Okay, that's the full operating system config. Boy, that's nasty. I also need a listen block. Okay, we got the default on that. I want to have it on 8080, just for simplicity's sake. That's on server config. No, 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 no. So 8080, was it star? That should be enough. Cool. This could be a huge mess, but We'll see. When I run this, it's going to have to export, expose that port. 
Um, and before I go to the trouble, let's just make sure. Wait, HP serve directory. Okay, at least we know that that works locally. Um, the, the file will load correctly and it's not gonna cause me a trouble for that reason. Okay, let's run. Run config.sh. So, is it start? Do I need to do, uh, do the port mapping? Oh no. Maybe it's create, eh? Dash. Where is it? I thought it was dash P. Publish list. Publish containers ports to the host. Uh, Docker expose port. I forgot the syntax. Just give me the command line params. I don't want to see your whole SEO spam blog post. Docker run. That's better. There we are. Local port container port. Thank you, uh, fellow worker John. So I will put it in Docker create dash P uh, 80, 80, 80, 80. That should be good enough to make that work. All right, now run config uh, web server.scm. Yep, all right, let's see if I made a syntax boo-boo. And where is that defined? Geek Services Web? Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're back in web server to SEM. Geek, uh, no, GNU Services Web. Hopefully that's enough. Nope. Nginx requires loopback, which is not provided by any service. Fine, base.scm, loopback. Where's that coming from? All right, there we are. Static networking service type. Seems that's needed. <laughs> How did I copy that? Cool, now it's building. Let's see if this actually works. Then we'll call it. Ah, another failure. Dependencies couldn't be built. Fantastic. I must have uh, upset it somehow. Local file, fine. All right, so I need uh, Geeks G Express. Another? Did I do that wrong? Yeah, it's local file, right? I think I should have done this though, huh? That's right. Um, it's right over here. Yeah. And this should be outside of the perin. What? Missing closing parenthesis, okay. Almost there, folks, almost there. Ah, 
Ha, ah, unrecognized keyword. Is that because it needs a question mark? Of course. Scheme conventions. Okay. Now it seems to be working. Let's see how far we get. And for a uh, web host, you don't need bash and core utils. You don't need geeks. So let me just take that out. In fact, um, let's make that an empty list. This may not work, but at least uh, Nginx should return us some kind of response so we can see the Nginx is up and running. That would be good enough. Always takes its time. We'll check the uh, size of the image in the end also. doing something. Hello, temporary. So local file www, it must have found the folder. Oh, whoa. That's not supposed to be there. Let's start uh, Checking in some stuff too, maybe. Yes, the earlier error on pipe, yeah. Man, it's taking a while. I changed the uh, configuration too much. Now it has to rebuild everything. Infinite loop, doubt it. Geeks is doing something. Okay, there we are. Uh, hmm, oh, address is already in use. Yes, it is. That's right. Um, HTTPD stop, because the Emacs web server was running there, so that explains why that didn't work. Why aren't we checking substitutes again? Come on. I don't know why it's bothering. Oh, here we go, finally, jeez. I shouldn't need to build it again though. I didn't change anything, did I? Oh, I did, damn it. <laughs> I was just tweaking various little things in here and now I had to rebuild everything. That's why it uh, started doing that. Let's 
go ahead and push that up. Host name, yeah. Change the host name. I think I removed some packages also. Now we wait. But it did try to start up um, Nginx. Well, no, that's not right. The Docker tried to bind that port. So that, that's what failed. We don't know if, if Nginx is actually working though. And uh, the connection to the TTY will probably not work either, but I don't care too much about that. So long as it launches the container and uh, I can hit that port, it's good enough. We'll call it a day. So what did we learn, I suppose? Um, it's possible to create Docker containers for specific use cases. Uh, some will be more minimal than others. If you have a very specific manifest that has not much stuff in it, then you can make a very minimal Docker image. If you want to have a full system either with Geeks services or with Geeks, it, Geeks itself to be able to run builds using Geeks, then it's going to be bigger, but that's fine. I don't see really any problem with that. Um, the, the benefit is that you can make a custom tailored Geeks image for any purpose, uh, Geeks Docker container image for any purpose, and then publish that to um, Docker Hub and then use it. So this is telling me the exec failed, and that's true because I took bash out of this image. So that, that part's not going to work, but let's go look at localhost uh, 8080. All right, connection was reset. Yeah, interesting. Let's see if the container is still running. Oh, we got some a few running here. <laughs> I never cleaned up the old ones. But this seems to be the one. It's got the ports bound. 8080 to 8080. Hmm. And did I set that up right in the config? I don't know if server name needs to not be set. Okay. It might require a few more things. And I don't have a uh, bash shell to, to go in and see if the Nginx service is running, but it should be running. I mean, it didn't complain whenever it started, so. Did I give it the right one? Yeah, webserver.scm. Okay, anyway. I've, I'm over time on everything here, but, uh, well, hold on. One last thing, one last thing, 127.0.0.1. And then what about 0.0.0.0? Okay, connection reset, doesn't work. Anyway, we tried on that one. Uh, but I definitely recommend if you're interested in trying to play around with uh, Docker containers with Geeks, uh, I did push the changes I just made uh, for everything up to the repo. And uh, you can just take a look at those there and maybe build on that. I obviously need to add some more docs here, but I'll, I'll follow up on that maybe over the weekend and, and get it cleaned up because I do want this to be a resource for people who want to try to do this stuff. Because uh, I think it's pretty a pretty interesting and useful application of Geeks that doesn't require, you know, setting up your own whole system. So if you want to learn some cool things about Geeks, you can just play with Docker containers without having to install a Geek system on your computer. Uh, anyway, thanks everybody for being here today. Really appreciate all of you who were helping out in the chat, uh, pointing me in the right direction because I was bumbling around quite a lot. And... Um, 
yeah, we'll be back next week. And uh, until next time, have a great weekend and happy hacking. We'll see you. Thanks.